Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, September 2020. Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month is a compilation of the weird, disturbing, and downright baffling stories currently happening in our world. From serial killers to wrongful convictions, creepy finds, and chilling disappearances, these are the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for September 2020. Number 5. Strange Deaths of Elderly Couples There's something admirable about sweet elderly couples who have stayed through it all together, experienced the highs and lows, and love one another as much, if not more, than when they first met. To see love thrive continually and endure the test of time is truly inspirational and also a rare thing to find these days. But sometimes, looks can be very deceiving, and currently in the UK, there's something very terrifying happening to older couples. Beginning on April 28, 1996, the entire United Kingdom was rocked with grief by the news about the unexpected deaths of Howard and Beatrice Ainsworth. The couple, ages 79 and 78 respectively, lived in Wimslow, England, and were found to have been killed in a grisly manner. However, the detectives at the time cited a suicide note that led them to believe that it was a murder-suicide. The specific way in which they passed, though, was rather, in all sense of the word, terrifying. So much so that it's almost impossible to believe that a man who devoted his life to his wife could ever do such a thing. Mrs. Ainsworth was found with a knife sticking out of her head. Later, forensics found that her head was also hit several times with a hammer. Mr. Ainsworth, meanwhile, had his head covered with a plastic bag and police chalked all this up to a brutal murder and a morbid suicide. Years later, on November 26 of 1999, Donald and Oriel Ward were also found dead inside their home in Wilmslow. Like the Ainsworths, the disturbing manner of their deaths is almost beyond description. Mrs. Ward, who was 68, was reportedly hit with a ceramic hot water bottle over the head. She was then stabbed multiple times using the shards from that same broken bottle. Mr. Ward, who authorities believed to be the killer, then supposedly stabbed himself and slit his own throat. In the three years that followed, three other elderly couples were killed in the area of Northwest England. All these cases were initially ruled as murder-suicides as well. According to police, the husbands apparently went berserk killing their wives in the most brutal of ways before killing themselves. But just when we thought that the books were closed on this case, finally a new investigation revealed the chilling possibility that these killings could actually have been done by a serial killer who is now at large and is yet to be caught. In a 179-page report submitted by the Chief Coroner's Office of the Cheshire Police, it states that the deaths in Wimslow and Northwest England may share some similar attributes, one of which is that they could be the work of a serial killer. The report, which was already forwarded to the higher-ups in the community, went on to identify a male suspect living in Northern England. The full identity of this suspect, however, still can't be disclosed for legal reasons, but the person, meanwhile, strongly denies any involvement in the supposed string of murders. However, police are on the case and hopefully soon we'll have some answers. Number 4. Robert Dubois It's hard to imagine the pain and frustration felt by people who have been wrongfully accused of crimes and sent to jail. It's a total letdown of our justice system when an innocent person gets convicted, especially when these convictions carry sentences like life in prison. Thankfully, there are organizations like the Innocence Project who are working hard to set free these individuals who have been locked up for all the wrong reasons. Robert Dubois is one such unfortunate man who has recently been exonerated from the crime he was convicted of almost 30 years ago. And while this may bring cheer for him and those who believed his innocence all along, the story behind what he went through is a harsh one. On the morning of August 19, 1983, 
The lifeless body of Barbara Grams was found abandoned behind a dental office in Tampa, Florida. She had been raped and beaten to death, and a medical examiner who did the autopsy found a human bite mark on the victim's face. During around this same time, Dubois was reported to be arguing and causing problems with customers at a local bar. He had never even once been arrested or convicted of any crimes and he fully cooperated with police when he was apprehended. Authorities booked him, fingerprinted him, and then they asked if they could take a mold of his teeth. Having never experienced being detained, Dubois agreed, figuring that it was just another step in the process. When the results came back, it was determined to be a match to the exact same bite mark from the victim's face. Detectives immediately arrested and charged Dubois for the rape and murder of Barbara. He was only 18 years old at the time. Other than the matching bite mark pattern, there's absolutely no other evidence that could connect Dubois to the crime. But a jailhouse informant, who himself was accused of various criminal charges, told the authorities that the accused had allegedly confessed to raping and murdering the woman. And so that statement and the teeth marks sealed the young man's fate. Initially sentenced to death, he was later given life in prison, of which he served 37 years. Dubois made several appeals, but in 2019, with the backing of the Innocence Project, Florida's Conviction Review Unit looked into the case. There they found several loopholes in the prosecution's argument. It took some time, but in August of this year, the CRU recommended Dubois be exonerated plus given $2 million as compensation. At the age of 55, he is the 171st documented death row exoneration in the United States since 1973. Number 3. Terrifying Mansion Discovery Many of us would expect an old mansion to be filled with dark stories and secrets from the past. However, this specific home in Paris, France, seems to take that stereotype to a whole new level. French construction workers who were recently renovating a dilapidated mansion in Paris had to stop operations when they stumbled upon a gruesome find in the basement, the kind that you thought could only happen in high school mystery novels. The grand yet antiquated property in question is located at 12 Rue Oudinant, a rather exclusive residential district. The sprawling mansion here comes with an interior courtyard with huge private gardens. Considered historically significant, the site was home to some of the most affluent people, including the highly celebrated poet Francois Copy. And while the lavish residential unit has been abandoned since the mid-18th century, In January of this year, the property was sold at an auction for 35.1 million euros to Jean-Bernard Lafonta, a bigwig at a major industrial holding group in the region. Lafonta wasted no time in restoring the property back to its former glory, and so by February, an initial inspection was done. But much to the shock of those inspectors, they discovered a human corpse that had been decomposing in the mansion's basement which, according to estimates, could have been there for at least 30 years. The shocking discovery was only made public this July, and the reports revealed that the corpse was of Jean-Pierre Renaud, a homeless man known to have a drinking problem. Upon further examination of the body, police found numerous knife wounds and broken bones. Authorities, however, could not determine if Renaud died in the mansion or was brought there after he was killed. As such, the French police launched a criminal investigation, which they hope will shed some light on this very disturbing incident. Number 2. A List Attorney Update We covered this story recently in a past Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, but now new information has emerged in the case. In May of 2001, Alyssa Turney, a 17-year-old high school student from Phoenix, went missing. As it is often with cases like these, the family members would be the first people to be questioned when someone close to them goes missing. At the height of the investigation, Michael Turney, Alyssa's stepfather, 
told police that he had picked her up from school that day to have lunch. The two then argued for what was supposed to be the youngster's demand for more freedom. Then, as soon as they got home, the teen headed straight to her room. Michael also told the police that after bringing Lissa back home, he immediately went out again to pick up Sarah Turney, the younger sister, who was still at school. When they came back, he found a note saying that the young girl had gone and run off to California. The cops didn't see any reason to suspect foul play, and so they dismissed the incident as just another case of a juvenile running away from home. And in 2006, Alyssa's disappearance was brought back into the spotlight when a prison inmate named Thomas Heimer confessed to the girl's murder. Although authorities were quick to dismiss it as a lie, the confession brought an interesting angle that led them to reconsider their initial view on the runaway case. Two years later, and Michael was arrested for possession of explosive devices. Authorities also found a heap of creepy video footage showing the victim back when she was still young. Michael was then imprisoned and served a seven-year jail sentence for the pipe bombs, but not for Alyssa's disappearance. He got out in 2017, and meanwhile, the police still couldn't figure out what exactly happened to Alyssa. As the world slowly began to forget Alyssa's unfortunate circumstance, Sarah, her sister, remained insistent in bringing awareness to the case. She did so by doing podcast sessions and posting on different social media platforms, including TikTok. Much of the content revealed some of the grittiest details about her sister's relationship with their stepfather. Suffice to say, Michael had an unhealthy obsession with the girl, and this was proven by the various creepy recordings that Sarah shared on TikTok. And now, recently, all her hard work has paid off as Arizona authorities were finally able to nail down Michael's direct involvement to Alyssa's disappearance and eventual murder. Unfortunately, police can't reveal the exact details of the investigation that prompted them to indict the stepfather beyond reasonable doubt. But it's obvious her sister had a lot to do with it. On August 20th, 2020, a grand jury charged the man on one count of second-degree murder for the death of Alyssa Turney, and a trial will now determine his fate. Number 1. FBI's Most Wanted Man Arrested On New Year's Day of 2008, a murder investigation was launched following the brutal death of 18-year-old Amina Saeed and her sister, 17-year-old Sarah. The two Louisville High School students were gunned down, shot multiple times while inside a cab that was parked outside a motel in Irving, Texas. One of the girls, later determined to be Sarah, had actually managed to call 911 on her cell phone. In some of her desperate final words, she told the emergency operator that she was dying. Much of what Sarah said during the call was hard to understand and even worse, the dispatcher's repeated request for the victim to provide an address was not answered. It was only through another call made an hour later that the sisters' lifeless bodies were found inside that cab. But it didn't take too long for authorities to find their person of interest in the case as all fingers pointed to the young girl's father, Yasser Abdel Saeed. Saeed's own family members even reported to the police how the suspect threatened to harm Sarah for going on a date with a non-Muslim person. Due to this, his wife Patricia fled with both daughters a week before the tragic incident. In a statement, she said that she feared for her life as well as her daughters. A relative further explained to authorities that this could be an honor killing, that's an Islamic tradition where a woman is murdered by a relative in order to protect the family's honor. Saeed, who was a former taxi driver, was immediately issued an arrest warrant, at which point he fled. For more than half a decade, the Egyptian-born U.S. citizen was able to evade arrest. In 2014, the FBI officially added his name to the list of the 10 most wanted fugitives. After more than 12 years on the run, he was finally arrested in the city of Justin, Texas on Wednesday, August 26, 2020, and is currently detained in the Dallas County Jail. His son, 
32-year-old Islam Yasir Abdel Saeed and brother, 59-year-old Yasin Saeed, were also apprehended and charged with concealing a person from arrest. Each of them could face up to five years in prison for that. Meanwhile, Yasser Saeed could face the death penalty should the court be able to convict him of capital murder. So there were the strange and scary mysteries of the month for September 2020. Every day we encounter strange and baffling stories that most of us don't know what to make of. These are just a handful, but there's still so many more to uncover. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please remember to subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every single week for you guys to check out. And check out our new podcast called Every Town, which is available wherever you listen to your podcasts and on this channel as well every Friday. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys soon.